These aren't your chips. You only think they're your chips. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Oh my god, my kid ever said that. <laughs> okay, so the very first section of the notes is the subject parcel ID. Okay, because we want to know what are we surveying. Okay, so what I want in there is APN. Street address, if there's more than one street address, just pick the main one. Okay. Investing deed. Recording ID. Okay, now let me explain that real quick. Let me explain what a vesting deed is. Vesting means it's the deed that transfers title. Okay? It's not a finance document. So a deed of trust is not a vesting deed. Okay? A deed of trust is a deed you give to the bank that says if I don't pay my loan back, you get my property. So it's actually a, they call it a deed of trust, but it's a deed of I don't trust you. I don't trust you to pay your loan back, so you're going to deed me your property. Okay? That's not a vesting deed. A vesting deed is the one that transfers title. If you go into a service like DataTree, there's actually two options. There's last finance document and there's last transfer document. This is the transfer document. We don't want the last finance document, usually. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. If Monique and I go and get a loan on the house, we're going to execute a deed of trust. Did that transfer the property? No. no. All it did was tell the bank, if I don't pay my loan back, they can come get my house. Okay? Now, if I foreclose, and the bank goes to get my house, there will be a transfer deed that gives the property to mm -hmm. the bank. Okay. So we just want to know what are we surveying. Okay, the next thing we have in there is review of the vesting deed land description. Okay, so let me explain. There's two parts to a vesting deed usually. And this is the language that I use. May not be what everybody uses. Okay. But there's two parts. Okay, there's the part the attorney does, and then there's the part the surveyor does. The part that the attorney does is called the D jacket. Okay, that's the first few pages. Okay, and usually the first page of the D jacket has your recording ID. So your booking page or your document number, and it's going to give you your grantor. That's who's giving the property. So this guy is, is selling, okay. and it will give you the grantee. Okay, that's who's buying. And it will usually tell you the type of deed type. Okay, sometimes they put it in big bold print at the top, sometimes you have to read the clause. Okay, but there's a few types, and I want you to note the type in the note. It's most commonly a grant deed. Okay, those are also called a warranty deed. We're not going to talk about how they're different today, but okay. You can also have a quick claim. I can't remember how to spell claim. Is the I before the A? No, you have it right. I have it right. Quick claim deed. Okay, then there's another type of deed called the patent. We don't see those very much because they're old. Okay. Now, sometimes they'll just say right at the top, grant deed. Other times you have to look at the clause. So the clause will say, land in does hereby grant to Julian the property described as follows. This is called the granting clause. Okay, so if it doesn't tell you at the top of the deed, the newer deeds will tell you, but if it doesn't tell you at the top of the deed, 
you got to look for this word right here. If it's a grant deed, it'll say grant. If it's a quick claim, it'll say it does hereby quick claim to Julian. So sometimes you have to look at that. Okay, and then it usually says the property described as follows, and then it'll have the little paragraph, but more commonly on a modern deed, it'll say C, exhibit A, or B, or C, but it's usually exhibit A. Okay. That's all in the deed jacket. Then there's the part that the surveyor does. That's what I call the land description. Everybody else calls it a legal description. I don't like that term. I like land description better because that's what it is. It's a description of land. Okay, that's what we read when we get a Kobo a deed. So you know what that is, right? Okay, that's the land description. Okay, so in the note, you're going to tell me the recording ID, the grantor, the grantee. You're going to tell me the type of transfer. Okay, and then you're going to give me just some basic, really basic information about the land description. I basically, right here, I just want to know a couple things. I want to know how many parcels. So is it one parcel or three parcels or five parcels? Or maybe it's a one, it's one parcel with two exception parcels. So it'll say parcel one, except they're from, except they're from. Those are exception parcels. So just tell me. It's got one parcel with two exceptions, section parcels. So tell me how many parcels, and then tell me what type of land description is it. And there's a few basic types, and if you don't know, you just come get me or Matt, we can tell you, or Will can tell you. Okay, so what type? Okay, so meets and bounds. Okay. We're not going to get into the details today, but there's meets and bounds, there's bounds only. There's strip descriptions. There's aliquot, that's public lands, the north half of the section. Okay. There's lot and block, that's lot two of block five. Okay, there's lot and block, and there's what I call by area. Okay, so there's a few types. So you just let me know. There's one parcel with two exception parcels. Their description is meets and bounds. Okay? So I'm only looking for a paragraph here. Okay? Okay, then you put in the order of boundary resolution. Okay, which we're not going to get into major detail about today. Okay? But the surveyor that put the boundary together should have those notes. Okay? But we kind of sat through that on Harrison 1349, right? We did that together. I think you guys were in here when we did it. I don't think I was here for the second half of that. Okay. But I think I understand what was going on. Okay. All right. So controlling survey. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. So the controlling survey. There can only be one. Okay. The controlling survey is the survey that creates the parcel. You can call it the, the creating survey too. Controlling survey. There can only be one. As a general rule. So you've got one or none. Okay. And if you have one, it's always, in California, it's always a parcel map or subdivision map. Records of survey do not create parcels. They only retrace parcels. Okay. Why, would it, why would it be subdivision or subdivision? Okay. Not a record of survey. Records of survey do not create parcels. Okay, say your question again, Joe. For a subdivision map, that's like the map they put together when they are about to build, or when they have built a subdivision? Uh, no, a subdivision map subdivides one parcel into many parcels. They both do this. So in California, a parcel map is four lots or less. A subdivision map is five lots or more. Okay. Okay. So if you don't have a parcel map or a subdivision map, you don't have a controlling survey. Yep. And you're going to know because your land description is going to be lot and block. If it's lot and block, lot two of block five or parcel A is shown on that map, that's going to be your controlling survey. Okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's not that, then the parcel is created by deed. Okay. So we don't let you do that anymore. So it used to be I could just give Julian a deed and say, 
I give Julian the south five acres of my property. We don't let you do that anymore. You have to do a map now in California. Okay, but older stuff is done by deed. Okay, and the government still gets to do stuff by deed because they get to do whatever they want. Gotcha. Okay. So if you don't have a controlling survey, you're just going to say no controlling survey in that section. Okay. If you have a controlling survey, there's some information that I want to know about the survey. So what do I want to know in the notes? So here's what I want. I want to know recording ID, so book page. That's actually, it would be better to call it filing ID because maps get filed, not recorded. Filing ID. So that's book and page. So book two of page 10 of records survey. I want to know that. I want to know the date filed. I want to know the surveyor that signed the map. I want to know the company. If there's a company, I want to know the company that prepared the map. And then I want a one sentence description that tells me a little bit about the map. Divided the subject parcel into five lots, or merged three parcels into one. It's one sentence that tells me a little bit about the map, okay? Description of what, what happened on the map. Okay, it's also, if you want, it's helpful here to tell me, were there any mons set on the map? because that's going to become important later on. So you just say, no monuments set at the map, or map only set center line mons, no monuments set on lock corners, something. When you do your first one, come get me, we'll look at the map, we'll figure out what to write. Okay, okay so then, you're going to have, you might have retracing surveys. So retracing surveys are always, almost always, records of survey. Okay. Records of survey retrace a parcel. They don't create it. Okay. So most of everything you have on this list is going to be a retracing survey. Okay. So almost always records of survey. Jesus list off the record number. Oh, okay. Yep. And I want all the same information as over here. One paragraph for each one for each retracing survey. Okay, now you might not have any retracing surveys. It could be created by deed and never surveyed. That happens. So then you're just going to say no retracing surveys. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's retracing surveys. Next section.